Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and today I want to show you a super simple method of Windows privilege escalation. Now this method relies on the always install elevated setting being enabled on the system and for our current user. So let's first start off by taking a look at Microsoft's documentation about what this setting actually does. Now it's something that can be configured by group policy, but the, uh, the effect ultimately lives in the registry. So we're going to be taking a quick look at the Windows registry today, but nothing too complex. Now this always install elevated setting if set for the system and for the current user that we have maybe a low privilege shell on will allow us to run and install any MSI file with system level privileges. Now this should sound very dangerous and it is. You can see in Microsoft's documentation they also you know have a warning right here. They say they strongly discourage the use of this setting. But if you see that you have a shell as a user and this setting is enabled, you'll be able to run arbitrary MSI files like a maliciously crafted one with system level privileges and it'll be a very easy privilege escalation scenario for you. So let's take a quick look at the scenario for today. Right now I'm on a Windows 10 machine and I am currently logged in as this John Doe user. If we do a who am I uh, slash all, we'll see the privileges associated with this user and you can see they have nothing crazy they're just a regular domain user this is actually on the uh the lab that i've been building in the current lab live stream series so we have uh you know our low privilege shell and this this could be over winrm or rdp or whatever you want to have it right now i just have a local console through esxi but if it's a remote session it'll work the exact same way so let's first start off with the setup of this if you want to follow along and do it in a lab it's a very quick setup and very simple to do First thing we need to do is launch an administrative command prompt session. So I'm just going to go to run as administrator and enter my administrator credentials. So we'll do username of administrator and the password for the administrator account. And then we can launch our administrative command prompt session. Now I'm going to pull up my notes here. There are uh, two registry keys that we need to add. So the first one is for uh, HE local machine. And this is referenced in the Microsoft documentation. But if you run this command here for reg add and then this location for the registry key with the value of always install elevated if we set that to one then that will enable this setting for uh the actual system itself but we still have to enable it for the individual user so let's just go ahead Ooh, i don't think i copied that properly let's go ahead and copy that and we'll paste it in and hit enter and you know i already have that set so it's going to ask if i want to overwrite it that's fine so that's how you go ahead and add that one registry key now the next one is actually specific to the user that you are running as. So if, you know, for example, we're looking at this John uh, Doe or John Smith, one of those, we're looking at that user. So let's see. Um, yeah, John Doe user. So what you need to do is do a who am I slash all and take note of this SID that gets listed here because we need to set a registry setting that's, you know, unique to a specific user account and that's going to be referenced by this SID here. So let me open up my notes here and we'll take a look at the next registry key to add. So the next one we need to add uh, for the specific user. So it's going to be at hkey users slash the SID of the actual user, like we just saw in the who am I slash all command, and then in slash software, policies, Microsoft, Windows, installer. And it's the same thing as the other one. It's the uh, value of always install elevated. The type is a reg D word and the uh, value of it, the data is one. So if we just, I'll just copy and paste this here and we can go ahead and run this in our command prompt. Now, again, for you, the SID is going to vary depending on the uh, user you're running it as. And I put this in the wrong command prompt. We need to do this in the one that is running as administrator, of course. So we can right click and paste into the administrative command prompt. And that's fine to overwrite that. That is all fine. And that's it. That is the complete setup for this, um, you know, setting this up in your lab. That's all you need to do is add those two registry values. So I'm going to close out of this administrative command prompt. We no longer need that. And we're just going to clear this screen to get a bit of our screen real estate back. So here is where you would be sitting when you're looking to do the privilege escalation on the machine. You're going to have a low privilege shell as a user. And the first thing you want to do is check if these settings are enabled on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and reference my notes here. And these are the two queries that you need to run. So the first one is querying to see uh, if the always install elevated is enabled for the current user. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste it into our you know low privilege command shell and we can see that this always install elevated is set to one that is what we want if it's not set to one this will not work so you need this to be set to one now we'll go ahead and we're going to do the same query but instead of h key current user we need to query in h key local machine for the exact same setting so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and let's paste it right in and you'll see that we have the 
always install elevated set to one here as well. Now it needs to be set to one in both of these locations or it will not work. It cannot just be set in one or the other. It needs to be set in both. That's why we set it up that way in the lab setup. So if you see that these are both set to one, what we can do is run any MSI files with system level privileges, even though we are just a low privilege user. Now this is very dangerous because we can use um, MSF Venom as part of Metasploit and create a malicious MSI file that we can then run to get a reverse shell or add a user or whatever other payloads you can imagine. So let's jump over to our Kali machine here. And the first thing we want to do is run MSF Venom. So I actually already typed this out and I'm just going to paste that in so we don't have to go through typing it all out. But uh, essentially we're going to be using MSF Venom to create a uh, MSI payload. So the payload type I'm using is Windows Shell Reverse TCP. You can use whatever payload type that you would like. I'm gonna set the local host value equal to uh, our IP address, so it will beacon back to our machine and the port to respond back to on 4444. And then the payload type is MSI. We're gonna save it as payload.msi. Go ahead and press enter, and it's going to generate that payload automatically for us. And this can take a couple seconds to run, so don't worry. But once that's finished, if we do an LS, you can see we now have this payload.msi. So I'm going to copy this uh, payload type here because we're going to need that once we start up our MSF console. So once we start up the actual Metasploit framework, we need to start our reverse shell listener to catch that shell once it actually runs. So once this boots up, we can do we can uh, enter in use exploit slash multi slash handler. And then what we need to do is set our payload type. So we'll do set payload and then paste in our payload type. We'll set the L host to, for me, it's going to be ETH0 is the adapter I want to listen on. And then we're going to set the local port to 4444 as we configured in our payload setting. Now, if we hit run, we're going to start that TCP handler and it's going to be listening and just waiting for that reverse shell to catch. Now I'm going to jump back over to the other tab where we have our payload file. Let's see, let's get the IP address of this machine. All right, so we have that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is spin up a simple Python web server so we can transfer the payload over to the target machine. Now you can transfer this payload in whatever way you would like. It doesn't matter how you transfer it. But for me, the easiest way to do it is do sudo python3 mhttp.server and then 80 for port 80. So this is just gonna spin up a simple web server with Python and host the current directory. So let's go ahead and enter the sudo password and get that rolling. Oh, let's see, wrong password here. There we go. So now we should be able to browse to this IP address in the browser of our Windows machine. So let's just go ahead and log back in. And again, you don't need a, a local session or even a uh, remote desktop session. You can do this directly over at like a WinRM session or something like that. So let's just go ahead and browse to the IP address here in our uh, web browser and we can download our payload.msi. Now, this is going to complain that there's a virus in it, most likely, but we can just go ahead and click keep. You know, we do want to keep that. And it is important to note, I have disabled uh, all antivirus on this machine. Windows Defender is disabled, so we don't have to worry about any sort of, you know, uh, evasion of Defender or anything like that. So it's okay that these signatures are known. We're just going to basically click next and allow it all through. But you keep in mind that you might be fighting against antivirus on the machine that you're working on. So now that we've downloaded that malicious MSI file, we can go over to our downloads file and we'll see it right there. Now, keep in mind, since we have the always install elevated enabled, when we run this MSI, it's not going to run in the context of our John Smith user. It's going to run as system. So it's going to execute this reverse shell as system, even though we're not an administrator or anything like that, just because of that always install elevated. So if I go ahead and double click on that payload, uh, if we're going to see, you know, Windows is going to complain about it because of smart screen. But what we can do is just hit more info and run anyway. That's fine. We'll let it through. Now, you will see that it will say there's an error um, running the MSI file. But that is not, in fact, true. If we just go back over to our Kali machine and go over to Metasploit, we see that we did get command shell opened. So if I just hit enter and we do a who am I? Or if we spell who am I, right? If we do a who am I, we can see that we are now NT authority system, which is the highest level of access we can get on that local machine. So that is how you can use the always install elevated feature for privilege escalation on a Windows machine. It's a very simple method, and it's something that you should definitely look out for as one of your first steps in checking for privilege escalation because exploiting it is so simple. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.